Great. So we have finally reached our first economic indicator, the quarterly GDP report released by the Bureau of Economic Analysis, BEA for short, of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Before we deep dive into this report to understand the composition of consumer spending, government expenditure, investments, exports minus imports in the U.S. economy, we need to understand the historical context of GDP in the country of interest for us, the U.S. Understanding the historical context of GDP to determine what is sustainable GDP and what the reaction of central banks especially the Federal Reserve Bank and the financial market participants' reaction when the gross domestic product breaks out of its threshold levels improves our ability to predict the future. We will have more confidence of whether the central bank will lower or raise interest rates to preempt a recession or overheating of the economy. We will have a better understanding of how financial market participants react to each economic indicator, driving the markets higher or lower. After we look at the brief history of growth in the US, we deep dive into each of the components of gross domestic product to determine their subcomponents. We learned that the components of gross domestic product are consumption expenditure, government spending, investments, and net exports. So when we talk about consumption expenditure, we need to know what the composition of consumption is. What exactly are the households spending on in the U.S. economy, and how much are they spending? When we deep dive into consumption spending, we will see that consumption expenditure is made up of three subcomponents, durable goods, non-durable goods, and services. Similarly, we learn about the composition of investments, government spending, and net exports and their weights in the total expenditure number. Now, at the end of this section, you will have a good understanding of the composition of each of the components of GDP, the release dates of the quarterly GDP report, and the importance of this economic indicator for the financial markets. Now we look at the historic growth rates in the U.S. economy and why central banks and policymakers strive to contain growth within a sustainable level. The growth rate an economy will experience can fall under the three phases, high growth, sustainable growth, and a recession. It is important to understand the historic context of growth in that particular economy in order to classify growth under these three categories. A high growth of say 6 to 7 percent in a highly developed economy such as the US might not be sustainable unless the economy is just moving out of recession. But it can be the average growth rate in an emerging economy such as India or China. The general consensus is that real growth between 2.5 to 3.5 percent in the US is sustainable without inciting inflationary concerns. In countries such as the US, during high growth periods when the economy is expanding at 6 to 7 percent, for example, the demand for goods and services is rapid and puts an upward pressure on prices. Price increases overtake wage increases, dampening consumer spending. Consumers start spending on borrowed money, thereby increasing debt expansion. So high inflation and increased debt spending causes the Federal Reserve Bank to react by increasing interest rates to cool the economy. An increase in interest rates increases borrowing costs for firms, thereby reducing debt expansion and business investments, bringing the economy to a slower rate. Now, the reverse happens during a recession. A recession is defined as two consecutive quarters when the real GDP is negative. In this scenario, the central bank reduces interest rates to boost spending. Lower costs of borrowing for consumers and corporates induces spending and, and investments. 
Thus, it is usually seen that when the real GDP moves above or below a sustainable growth rate, the central bank uses its monetary tools to bring it back to a sustainable level.